Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're going to do team compositions for Across the Obelisk. Uh, I've been putting this one off a little bit because there is a lot to talk about. There are actually over 1,800 combinations of heroes for you to select for this, uh, this you know, choice of 4 out of 16. Kind of a big deal. That's almost 2,000. Uh, we're not going to go over every composition because that would be insane. But uh, what we will do is kind of, kind of define some roles of each character how a team composition uses those roles to make an effective uh, synergy or, or successful run. And then we'll kind of go, I'll split it into two seconds. I'll do, uh, I'll assign us, give you a good idea of the best heroes for each role and then the best, best roles for each hero. So there will be some overlap in those two sections. Don't be afraid to skip the one or the other. I'll try to keep uh, the information uh, unique and interesting, but uh, there's really just two ways to approach this because sometimes you're like, man, I need to find a, a tank or other times like, man, who, I want to use this character. What can I fit them into? So there's a lot to cover here. Now, before we get too far into it, I would like to thank everyone for the thousand subscribers. That means that I now have things set up with YouTube a lot better. Uh, I can now actually work for tips. So if you didn't know it, there's a new thing in YouTube these days where uh, there's a little heart below the uh, the video here or right above the comment section that allows you to uh, tip your waiters uh, if you feel so inclined. Uh, and if that's uh, not your thing today, then I also run very well on uh, praise, compliments, and feedback in general. So the more information I have from viewers, the better I am able to shape future content, uh, which makes all of us much happier because uh, the important part is uh, getting the information you want to you. So uh, I will do my best in this video to stay on track. There is a lot to cover. Uh, it will be one of the longer videos, and uh, it's really hard to structure this one. So let's have at it. So and across the obelisk, you can generally category, categorize each hero uh, or their, their part in a team into four different roles. Uh, those are a tank or frontliner, a, a DPS or damage dealer, a, a healer, and then some sort of support role. Uh, every team, uh, most successful teams will actually use one of each of those. Uh, you can, of course, mix and match, but you definitely are, are going to need some sort of the first three there a tank a dps and a healer and then you can kind of just fill in that fourth role as needed and we'll go over each of those in detail now uh for tanks the idea of a tank or frontliner uh and front being the right side of this screen here left side being the back the the frontliner here uh is is a tank but i do want to cover some misconceptions here their, their job is not to grab aggro or to keep aggro or force all the attacks to themselves uh, as you may see in other games uh, there eve is even an effect called taunt in this game but that is not the intent of a frontliner the intent of the frontliner is to soak up all the front attacks because in this game most of the damage is dealt to the the front hero uh, or a larger a a larger portion to the front hero and then next the back hero has a couple of things that will be targeting them specifically, which can be really rough and we'll talk about. And then the middle two have the least effects with the third position being the safest and taking the least amount of damage. So a frontliner, their job is to take all those front hits, which have unique properties and are most of the damage will hit them or uh, they have the most attacks hitting them. Not necessarily the most, you know what I mean? Um, or I hope you know what I mean, because I'm trying to explain it. <laughs> yeah. So their, their goal is to stay alive in the front line. And then also maybe add a little bit of extra protection to the other guys when they, guys and girls, ladies, gentlemen, germs, theys. Boy. Anyway, they help provide protection to the rest of the team in some form. Uh, so soak up their portion, provide cover to the rest of the team. So the best frontliners, unless we can delete this team I had there, the best frontliners uh, is probably Magnus. I would say he is the most overall... Um, Easiest to play, covers all those bases, uh, and we'll talk about his specific roles in that uh, later. Well, let's... Ooh, I told you this was hard to structure. There's so much to talk about here. So, Magnus does this by... He starts with Reinforce, so he can take the, the hits initially very well. He's very fast, so he can get ahead of the rest of the enemies, and that allows him to apply block to the entire team, and or himself as needed. So, his, his claim to fame is he's fast... He provides AOE block, he has reinforced to begin with, and uh, he also has some really good debuffing to the enemy team, because that's the other thing uh, 
frontliners will usually do is protect their team and kind of debuff the enemies, make sure that they're, they're taking a little more damage or being slow or that kind of stuff. And Magnus does that with slows and vulnerable to make sure that uh, he his team is going to go faster than theirs and or that he can get ahead. He, his, he really just has to go first to apply the block to the team to protect them. Uh, wow, that took a lot. We'll, we'll try to speed this up. So Magnus is easily the, the most accessible and best overall. Uh, next, I would say Bree is a really good frontliner. Does a lot of the same roles. Uh, instead of defensive mastery, she has uh, skill mastery, uh, applies the same effects, and has uh, a thorns uh, subgenre uh, or sub theme uh, compared to Magnus having the a little more slow debuffs and that reinforced to begin with. But basically, they serve the same role. Very interchangeable at this point. Uh, Bree has a little more powerful going on. Magnus has a little more slow. But I would say Magnus and Bree are the most accessible frontliners. Next, we have Heiner. The reason Heiner is kind of low on the list is because even though Heiner has the best defensive talents in the game and is the best defensive hero, like sh sh raw numbers, uh, the problem is Heiner is usually very slow and goes after the enemies. So for him to have blocked to the team, the team has to, one, take the hit on the first round, which sucks. Uh, but then for second round for that block to be effective you have to have fortify to keep that block onto them the next turn so heiner relies on taunt on fortify there's just a lot more hoops that heiner, heiner has to go through to have a similar effect as magnus or brie uh the nice thing about him though is he has a lot more resistance as baseline and uh, because he has to go through all those extra hoops he is not as reliant on going fast so if he gets slowed or shackled uh he is not in the doghouse as magnus would be so Heiner, I would say, is the next in line. Heiner will do you really good uh, in the, the low to mid madness just because, like I said, raw numbers, he's easiest survival himself and team survival in general. Not as many debuffs as the other heroes, but uh, very, very defensive and slow roll. Other options we have for frontliners is really just Andrin. Uh, nice thing about Andrin is Andrin goes super fast. Uh, scouts have deflect, which is a lot of block, so going fast and having block for himself is good. Uh, downside to Andrin is that he cannot protect the team as well, especially on turn one. On turn two, you can start doing a Ballad of Evasion to give your entire team evasion. That's his, his team survival thing, but that again is turn two, so that's the reason Heiner and Andrin are both lower on the list, is because they can't protect the turn, the team on turn one, where Bree and Magnus are much more likely to do that. Uh, other frontliners... Not so much. We'll talk about uh, Evelyn Tank later, but that um, has a lot of hoops. And I'd say Magnus, Bree, Heiner, Andrin in that order. We'll try to just do like top three, top four. So that's the tank roll. And we call it the tank not because they're forcing aggro, but because they are taking the front the front hero hits that the enemies play. Enemies will play cards that say front hero. And uh, those are consistent and heavy and a lot of physical damage. And you have to have someone that can take those hits for you. Uh, on average, warriors have the higher hit point pools, and that also helps them be the frontliner because a lot of bleed is applied to the frontliners in Act 1. Uh, let's see. What else have we got here for warriors? I think that's everything we want to talk about. No, sorry, not for warriors, for tanks. Those are not interchangeable because we did not mention Grookly. Grookly is not a tank. Uh, let's see. Next in line is DPS, damage dealers. We will not talk about all the specifics of the damage dealers yet. We'll talk about that later when we're talking about building team compositions. But damage dealers are the folks that have lots of talents and abilities that make them dish out heaps and heaps of damage, clear the entire enemy team. You'll dump all your resources into them, and uh, they'll make the enemy team go boom. Uh, best DPS right now, I'm going to say, are probably Sylvie, then Grookly, uh, then it's a toss-up between, like, say, Wilbur, Thules, Reginald, slash Otis, depending on which flavor you're feeling there. And, uh, yeah, I, th I think I said a little too many. So it's basically, I'd say Sylvie and Grookly are, are very similar play styles, and Sylvie is obviously the best right now. Uh, she is, do expect some changes to, to Sharp and or other things that affect Sylvie, so that um, both Sylvie and Grookly might be a little lower on the list in future days, but probably still a contender overall. Uh, wow. We're, um, 
this this is such a struggle to keep straight i apologize guys so those are all the the dps i'd mentioned uh honorable mentions are cornelius zek and uh gustav and maluka um Gust gustav might be uh up there with thules but they're the same kind of category of uh of skill there uh last well second next one is going to be healers healers are those that are they're not going to necessarily prevent the damage to the team, but they will recover the hit points of the team uh, for the eventual damage they do take. Um, their claim to fame is going to be keeping the health pools topped off between fights so that you don't start a new fight with uh, such a low health pool that you instantly die to the first turn of attacks from the enemies. Uh, healers right now are... These actually do fit the, the healers category here pretty well. Otis is pretty strong, depending on whether you not know, have Decadence on. Decadence really help, or sorry, is it de Decadence? The thing that affects Decay, um, it uh, that can really affect the 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 vitality that Otis is is doing. Otis also applies a lot of shields that apply heals, so very tanky overall. Kind of like on the Heiner thing, slow but super powerful in the fact that uh, Otis will get the job done without much loops or hoops to get it done. Uh, next on the list, I would say Maluka and Gustav are both really good healers uh, in their own right. I guess I'd say my healers are probably in this third row. There's so much to talk about here, guys. Um, I will answer so many questions later because I'm skipping so many things. Um, so Maluka and Gustav are both... Uh, they have a lot of regen going on. They have a lot of direct healing. And they have some supplemental things in their talent cards and their passives to amplify that healing. Uh, Nesglict is probably the best overall uh, useful and utility of healers. Does have some downsides to the fact that all of his healing is um, his passive healing is even to the team. It heals everyone the same. It doesn't heal. It's not targeted. So you have to supplement that with targeted heals or someone else to help smooth out that damage so that uh, all that healing is effective because if you heal everyone the same but only one person needs healing, you wasted, you know, three quarters of your healing. So uh, that's that's the reason I would put Nesglect as a little harder to execute, but overall really high on the list of effectiveness. Um, I would say, though, that ease of play is the reason I put Nesglect a little lower. And then, of course, Reginald could get the job done, but is the weakest of the healers. No one else has any effective healing. It's really just Gustav and the four healers that will be your healing role. And then last but not least, we have supports. Uh, supports can do uh, a variety of things. Supports can debuff the enemies so that they take more damage. They can buff your teammates so they deal more damage. Uh, they can pump energy and inspire. So energize and inspire into your teammates so that they can deal more damage. Specifically, you know, the DPS if you want to deal, if you want to kill things off and the healers if you need to catch up on uh, some survival and, and, and health points and stuff. So they're... Their role is to just provide resources to the team and debuffs to the enemy. And of those supports, I would say Evelyn is queen. Uh, Cornelius can stack a lot of fire for a fire team. and also has this, uh, starts with two scrolls of intellect, which does the same thing. Wilbur, you'll see, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of mages here. Zek. <laughs> so these kind of things do sort of fit the uh, the roles, the, the classes here, but but not quite. Uh, other supports we have, we have Magnus. He just does, and so instead of taking those front lines hit, you'd put him in the back, so he takes the, the sniper hits for the back line, and he'll apply the, the vulnerable on the enemy team, the slows. Another thing that supports can do is speed manipulation. So Andrin can fit that role. He'll uh, speed up your team and put Mark on the enemy to uh, considerable amounts. Uh, Bree does the same thing as Magnus, just instead of taking those front hits, just focusing more on the debuffs. Uh, so as you can see, Bree and Magnus are pretty high contenders for just overall usefulness. Uh, supports. And Nesglek can do some weird debuff and shenanigans. Mainly though, it's, it's Nesglek is just such an overall hybrid that he could just, you're not necessarily gonna rely on him for some of the other roles. Uh, so that's why I'd say it's it's more of a support thing because he can enable certain builds uh, just for the fact that he has the reduced skills uh, cost on skills and there are a lot of good healer skills that can uh, change the way you play a team. 
yes, we are way off script because I jumped some sections and uh, went back to others. So what did we not cover? So we did all the roles and who would fill those roles best. Uh, and next, I guess next is go through the heroes and then talk about what roles I'd fit them in so that you have another way to do that. There will be a break in the clip to jump to here. Yeah, and then we got to do team compositions afterwards. So Magnus, you will put Magnus in the front to take the hits. The back, oh, for snipers. So let's talk about positions. That's what I'm missing. So front line takes the most damage consistently. Back line takes the most like targeted things of uh, back line. There'll be assassins and snipers that do a high amounts of physical damage in, sh in short windows. And they'll be amplified by things like stealth or mark or vulnerable. So this back line, you got to be really careful to make sure they don't get uh, one shot or, uh, or or ambushed, so to speak. So sometimes you'll want to put one of the stronger heroes in the back for that reason. You also want to avoid putting uh, too many casters. Like if you can avoid it, don't put someone that relies on casting spells in the back. Uh, so like a Magnus support or an Otis because Otis doesn't actually cast healing spells. Or Nezglik because he has a lot of skills. Uh, those kind of heroes because the back line will take the most silences as well. So front line, majority of the damage, back line, ambushes and dis, uh, silences. Second place will take a lot of splash from the front line effects that hit the front and then chain. Uh, there's a couple of things that target middle heroes and it's a random chance of which one it hits. Uh, so between the splash damage and the, the middle targeting, the second place will take the, the next amount of damage and third is safest. Put your squishiest people here, but one of the bigger things to consider about where you're putting people in your order here is that ties and speed for your team will default to front going first. So if I have a if I have Magnus and Andrin here and they're both going the same speed, then Magnus will take his turn before Andrin just by virtue of being front in line. So what you'll want to do is try to a lot of the time put them in an order so that your damage is going last. Uh, so that you can heal up the team before you finish off the enemies. That you can buff your DPS before they deal their damage. And that your supports can give resources to your healers and your DPS before they uh, they take their turns. So usually the order you want to do is your, your frontliner, your support, unless it's like a, a Magnus support. Uh, your your battery support or your your energy support or, or debuff support here your healer and then your dps just for virtue of you want the turn the turn order you, the order that your players take the turn does matter and um that would be a reason to to select this order specifically but again if you're having trouble with those backline ambushes sometimes you'll you'll rearrange who's in back just by virtue of Hey, I don't want to get silenced. Hey, I don't want to get ambushed. Uh, that sort of thing. Because the back line is, is easily the most volatile spot when it comes to attacks and debuffs from the enemies. Uh, where are we at here? So now we're talking about where to place Magnus in his position. So for Magnus, uh, frontline tank, uh, backline support. Those are really the two big ones for him. You can all sometimes place him as a DPS. But that's kind of uh, the the weakest of his three roles for him. Heiner, frontline tank. Yep, that's that's Heiner for you. You can do some weird things with uh, damage with him, but that's from the front line too because he triggers him getting hit. Um, yeah, this this is Heiner's spot. You normally don't put Heiner anywhere else because that's what he is. It's a uh, tank or some weird DPS builds, but you, those DPS builds usually require Heiner getting hit. So yeah. That's Heiner for you. Grookly, damage dealer through and through. Uh, normally put him in the back line just because he has some pretty decent physical hits and he doesn't care about being silenced. Sorry, physical resists and doesn't care about being silenced. Um, I would never run him as a tank and he doesn't really have anything to support his support this. So Grookly is just a damage dealer. There's, he doesn't really fit anything else very well. Bree, front line su uh, tank, back line support. Um, or depending on, you know, turn order, you'll place him somewhere else. But it's tanker tanker support um you can do some weird thorn builds with her but she doesn't really have a, a dps or healing option uh andrin uh you can do frontline tank you can do a dps with slashing and uh mark and stuff like that you can do a support with mark and um 
speed manipulation. Uh, Andrew's claim to fame is is definitely speed. So uh, that allows him to to tank or support very well. And then, of course, he does have some pretty decent damage options and starter deck for that. Thules, uh, really only a DPS, kind of like Grookly. Uh, I don't see you running Thules in any other position. You can do some weird memeing stuff where he's like a pseudo stealth tank, where he he takes one hit and then goes invisible. Uh, that's really only a meme thing. It's a lot of fun to try, but uh, he's really just a, a DPS lizard. Sylvie, DPS, nothing else. Go figure. Scouts kind of like that. Uh, Gustav. Gustav is a really good healer. Uh, a really fair support because uh, he starts with Stanza and has access to all the spells. He starts with Songs of Sharp. As a support, he's normally supporting the, the top half of these characters, the physical damage dealers, because he starts with a lot of Sharp synergy. Uh, you will not frontline with him, and uh, there is a DPS option for him. Uh, so he, he does have that as going for him as well. It's not as clear cut as some of the other damage dealers, but it is definitely there. I would place him just a little below Thules when it comes to damage uh, in general. But Gustav being one of the newest heroes has probably, like just like Bree, a lot of versatility and uh, a lot of power to him. Uh, Evelyn, uh, you'll be, usually do her as a support. Uh, she has some damage options. She is one of the best Frost damage dealers. So you'll do either as a, a damage dealer or a support. Uh, she's really got a lot of things going for her in the support department. Uh, I forgot to mention this. For support, sometimes what they do is transform the damage type that someone will do. And we haven't even talked about damage types yet. That's whew, so much to talk about. We'll talk about that when we're talking about building team comps. But uh, she can change uh, damage to the different three elements to like fire, frost, or lightning, which can... Uh, you can do a lot of weird things with or can help save a, a run if someone's immune to something. She's usually going to be supporting the, the bottom half of this row of these characters here. Gustav was supporting the top halves. Evelyn doing the bottom half. They kind of fit the same role in that support uh, aspect. And just like Gustav, she does have a, a DPS option, but it's a little behind some of the others most of the time. Uh, she is the best frost option if you go frost, which we'll talk about later. Uh, not going to tank with her, can't heal. Uh, Cornelius, support or DPS, fire. Cornelius is fire mage. Fire has been nerfed to the ground oh so hard in oh so many ways. Uh, I'll talk about it a little more when I talk about damage types and building a team composition. But right now, the best role for him is probably a support just because he has scrolls of intellect. Uh, and then, of course, he is the best fire dealer in general. But that's in a bad place right now. But when it's back into a better place, Cornelius is the main man for the fire DPS. Uh, Wilbur. Lightning damage, DPS, and support. Kind of a maybe notice the theme with these three elemental mages. Uh, they're really good at supporting, and or they have their their flavor of choice go pew pew. Uh, Zek has a little less of the supporting options as the other mages, uh, and then is a, a shadow and dark damage dealer. Uh, he has a little more like wider spread, but less specialization in his support role. Uh, requires a lot more finesse and is a lot less access to some of the, the strongest ways to build him. I would say if you're looking for a support, Zek is not my first choice. Uh, Reginald. Reginald is Damage Dealer. That is his main role. Uh, he can heal sometimes. And I love it. I'm using... So I'm using this... The Ranger slot is the supports. The... The... The fire slot is the healers, and the healing slot is the DPS. So I kind of wish I could change these symbols a little before the video, but that's that's where you're going to slot them in most of the time. Anyway, Reginald as a, a damage dealer uh, relies a lot on Bless, and I guess I don't need to talk about damage types because that's later in the video. Uh, main roll damage, second as a healer. He used to be a viable tank, but not so much anymore. And uh, yeah, Otis, same thing, uh, except for in reverse. Better healer. Decent DPS. Uh, not really much support going on in either Reginald or Otis's kits. Uh, Maluka is about half C and half C about uh, how good of healing and how good damage. Can't really focus on either. She has uh, limits in damage. She she's too AOE for single like for damage dealer. She needs single target help, and she's too 
uh, AoE for for healing. Needs a little help with uh, just not so sorry. I guess like she just raw power. She doesn't have as much raw power as a as a healer sometimes. Um, I, I take that back. I, I said she's a pretty good healer. She. I was thinking of her shadow build. I apologize. Um, she actually has a really strong healing build these days. Um, so she is either a, a full healer or a uh, kind of a half DPS needs some help in single target damage. Nezglek, the same kind of thing, uh, except for the other way around. Nope, about the same thing. Pretty good healer overall. Uh, pretty decent AoE uh, damage dealer. Has some a little more single target options in Maluka, but just in general a harder to execute DPS plan. Uh, you can also do Nazglik as a pretty decent support. He has a lot of options for Inspire and just a lot of skill-based abilities that can really uh, modify and maintain a good game plan. Whew, I've got to take a small break here. Look at my notes here because, like I said, I'm off script and uh, so much to talk about in these team comps. We've just talked about, you know, positions we haven't even put all the pieces together we've now we've now identified all the pieces uh hopefully you can go back if you have any questions of what uh who qualifies as what role and what roles we need to put together ideally you're going to want a a tank a dps a healer and some sort of support or a duplicate of one of the previous things you've done i don't necessarily recommend double healers unless one of those healers is maluka just because uh is a is a dark maluka i apologize or Nezglicked because sometimes they can struggle as a solo healer. Uh, but for the most part, you, you'll either get a, a full support or some sort of secondary DPS or damage option. Uh, let's put some example teams together, I guess. Oi, my. Oi, oi, oi. So normally when you're building a team, we're going to talk about a damage type. And... I'm going to go in fairly detail about the first one. I'm just going to pick one of these at random, I guess. And we'll talk about, you know, how I built around it. And then for each damage type, I'm going to suggest a, a, a damage dealer for that build. And then you can build around it accordingly. Uh, hopefully that's enough information to go with of. This video is already stressing me out for its length. So let's just uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo Wilbur. Wilbur. We're going to make Wilbur our damage dealer. Wilbur is lightning. Lightning go pew pew. We need someone that can help with lightning debuffs. Uh, he does on hit damage, so bless is very powerful. Uh, he can't utilize sharp, so we don't need anyone that does sharp. So when we're going through our, our list of choices here, we want to keep those things in mind. So with our frontliner, uh, lightning damage, uh, we're going to want someone that can help lower resistances. Uh, or maybe some sort of speed manipulation. I don't see a really good reason for speed manipulation. So I'd say uh, Magnus or Bree for the front line because uh, they can do the, the vulnerable on the enemies pretty well. Uh, Bree is a little more sight and thorns heavy. Magnus is a little more slow and AoE block heavy. Wilbur is fairly squishy, so I like the, the Magnus one, but I'm also just personally partial to Magnus. Uh, these are fairly interchangeable at the moment. So, but we're just going to go with Magnus. So Magnus, I chose him as my front line because he can apply a lot of vulnerable. Andrew can't do vulnerable as much, and I think Wilbur would benefit a lot from lower resistances on the enemy. Um, next, I'm going to want some sort of, I have the DPS, I want some sort of healer. So I said Wilbur, uh, he does like a lot of multi-attacks, and he has he has the option to transform his damage to, uh, to lightning if I pick up the trident. So I might... Uh, want to double dip in bless as my damage increase so i'm going to pick one of the bless healers bless healers are those that apply direct heals so that's going to be either a nesglict a maluka or reginald i said reginald is one of the weakest healers so let's not do him so it's maluka or nesglict uh nesglict does a lot of things with insight and insane and can reduce the cost of really expensive cards uh wilbur kind of already does that so i'm not really feeling that uh, Maluka as a healer has a lot of dispels. I'm just going to go with Maluka because she's a little more like stable and safe. Nezglik would be a little more combo-y. Wilbur has some weird combo options for him. So like for me, I just want to lower back on the difficulty of my execution. So I'm going to pick in Maluka. If you want a little more combo-tastic, I'd bring in Nezglik, right? So it's they're both applying Bless to Wilbur. Uh, but... 
Maluka is a much more casual and free form way, uh, consistent way of doing that, if that makes any sense, right? So you, just, you have different reasons for picking your things. And, and so we're going to pick in Maluka. And now I need some sort of support. So for Wilbur, I'm doing lightning damage. And if for some reason the enemy is immune to spark, that would be really bad. So I either want someone to diversify my damage or to be able to push through immune to spark. Uh, I don't really see a way to push through immune to spark. Um, although there's not many monsters that have a high resistance to it. But you may already guess where I'm leading to. I'm going to go with Evelyn because she has the option to change the damage type to from lightning to another element of either fire or cold, depending on what the monster is weakest to. Uh, Evelyn just also can apply more spark debuffs to the enemy really well. So in this team comp, uh, Magnus is slowing down the enemies and making them vulnerable. Evelyn is applying a lot of spark to the enemies and giving energy and uh, cards to Maluka and Wilbur. Maluka is keeping us nice and, uh, nice and healthy, keeping debuffs off us um, and making sure that... Um, you know, all things go according to plan there. And then Wilbur here is going to the pew pew with the lightning bolts. And he has the passive that says all of the lightning damage is, uh, is spark damage is dealt to single target. So he, he enables that, that lightning plan to exist. And that would be how I make a spark team because Wilbur is the spark mage. Uh, I didn't really mention that to begin with, but now we're going to talk about all of the different types of teams you can build. So you could build, say a pierce team pierce team would be sylvie go figure uh she makes it so that sight affects the pierce damage so that would be why we would pick her up as our our pierce team fools is also a good backup singer for pierce because uh but fools would kind of double dip in the i want to do sharp damage and i mean i want to do slashing and pierce so he's more of like a a sharp team uh, slashing would pick up grookly because uh he has the best slashing kit and he can bring in the the fury uh, Blunt and Crack. I think uh, right now that's Bree and or Evelyn or some combination of the two. That one's actually a little more like hard to execute, but I'd say uh, maybe Bree is like the support to it and Grookly is the damage dealer to it because Grookly also has a lot of Blunt available and has lots of multi hits. So you just want to find the heroes that have uh, Crack synergies in their in their talents. Like say this one says it has, has a Crack synergy going on. Um, has apply crack to all monsters, that sort of thing. So you're going to look through the heroes, find a, a, a common theme of damage types or damage uh, resistance modifiers. So like crack makes it so that blunt does more damage kind of thing. Spark makes it so lightning does more damage. So find the common theme amongst one or two of your characters and build that team accordingly. Um, transformations, we already talked about Gustav can, can change damage types from uh, damage types to mind and make sharp effect it so he he supports these top guys and transforms that and Evelyn can can support all these casters down here I think I already said that uh, frost damage we're gonna go Evelyn and Zek those two are both really good frost DPS and if you pair them together it probably goes even better you know what I mean uh, fires Cornelius lightning is Wilbur uh, mind is Nesglicht. He can uh, use Sight to increase his mind damage. And Mind is also Gustav because he can transform into Mind. It's kind of late. Fools also do the same thing because Mind is kind of the, the bard or the singing class uh, thematic damage. So Fools has some interesting builds where he can go uh, like never ending stories or these these multi hit. Uh, song attacks so it's 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 a lot of mind damage but he's double dipping into like uh to bless and on hit effects because he's doing lots of repeated attacks uh and then of course last but not least is holy and i'm going to use holy as an example of how you can also combine two categories together to amplify them so for holy damage uh reginald and otis are your holy damage dealers um with them uh Otis has access to a uh, card Sunfire. Where is it? Sunbeam. And this does uh, Holy and Fire damage and applies Burn. And then later in the 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 Holy decks, I mean the, the Healer decks, deck lists, card lists. Wow, I can speak straight. There's a card called Holy Fire that says, I can do this. Holy. 
it specifically says uh, deal holy damage based on the amount of burn on the target. And there's a lot of these. We call them we call them detonators. Uh, that based on X amount of stacks, you deal X amount of damage. So, uh, so if I say equals target, right? Equals target. Mm, we get a couple heal spells in here, but you get a lot of damage spells. So Holy Fire says I can turn burning into holy damage. Mind Twist says I can turn insanity into mind damage. Mind Vision, sight into mind. You get the point. Like so, poison, poison to shadow. Uh, I don't even know if we talked about uh, poison and bleed builds. I apologize. I skipped those. Fire into fire. Yeah, that one's a little straightforward. Sight into shadow. So these poison into slashing are ways that you could combine two damage effects to to uh, to do a lot of damage. And what you're going to do is you're going to set up your your support to be the one that applies that. So if I'm doing this kind of build, Cornelius is going to be my support because as he's applying me energy and cards, he's also applying a lot of burning to the enemy. And then Otis comes around and does his big holy fire damage attack. And Otis is holding up all the powerful and we're, we're dumping resources into him and He's just going to use those buffs that Corne those debuffs that Cornelius made to to increase the damage. You can do the same thing with the poison builds. Your main poison dealer can be uh, doing the X equals attacks, and the other one is applying as much poison as possible uh, beforehand, or the other way around. It's maybe how I'd do it. Um, and then those support those support players can also they can grab one or two of those detonators as well. They just won't use it as effectively or as often. But uh, that's just one way to kind of combine that that support and DPS role. I I feel like I talked way too much. This is a super requested video, but it's really hard for me to structure because there are 1,820 combinations of how to put these heroes together. Uh, and a majority of them are very valid. You can run an all healer team like this. This is a thing. It's uh, it's a lot less good of a thing than it used to be. But it's still a really good thing. This this can happen. It's it's happened many a time. Uh, I think the harder ones to execute are some of the you know like all warrior, all scout. But uh, I think I think all mage. Someone someone post a I don't know post a clip or something about an all mage one. You're gonna have to remind me so I can get it past the YouTube filter. But uh, this is this is probably possible. I think the only thing you're lacking here is a little bit of healing. Uh, Evelyn can tank pretty well and. Uh, you're off to the races you know what i mean so like there are 1800 combinations and uh they're all things they all happen uh hopefully this was helpful i might try another attempt at this uh and if i do it's because i'm gonna get enough feedback from y'all about what was helpful and what i kind of dragged on about or or what wasn't as useful i feel like there's a couple things i didn't cover but uh there was a lot to talk about here so hopefully you walk away from this with understanding the kind of roles that are expected or, or talked about uh, in building a team. And you can kind of piece together a group based on what you want to do. So if I say I wanted to do a, a an ice team, no, that, we already did elementals here. Let's do a slashing team. So I got, I got Grookly, man, he does the, he does really cool slashing damage, but I've used Grookly so much. I don't want to do that. Let's do, let's do Andrin. So Andrin does slashing. How do I help out slashing? Well, I need some sort of frontline tank. They can do vulnerable because vulnerable is a thing. Let's go with Bree because I play Magnus too much. Heiner, 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 just tank it for us. We might be a little low on the vulnerable, but we're going to be alive. Thank you, Heiner. Uh, Gustav, he's a good support because he's got sharp. Yes, please. And I want some sort of healer. Well, Andrew goes slicey slashy and I need to. Uh, but I want some some bleed on the target. Or I want bless. I want bless. I want a bless healer. Let's go Reginald or Maluka because they both say healing spells on their thing they say hey when i cast healing spells healing things happen but reginald does more bless so let's do him and look i made a team comp and it'll work just fine order you can rearrange your heart's content i think the biggest one you have to do is make sure your frontliner is the beefiest boy or girl in the club and uh second thing to worry about this backline getting silenced or nuked by ambushes uh and like I said, turn order matters, but in that order is the importance. Frontline's got to stay alive. Backline's got to stay alive. And then flop it around to your heart's content. Uh, hopefully you can walk away making a team, uh, having an idea of what the important parts of a team are. And uh, 
You just gotta you just gotta pick something you want to build around. Usually, I'd say pick a damage type or a DPS to build around, and then build it from there, and just kind of see what that DPS is missing or needs, and how they all play together. I could do a whole video about damage calculations, which I might do here in the near future. But there there are a lot of moving parts here. So thank you again for listening to all this and putting up with my sort of ramble. I I just I just fell off the fell off the outline and script here a little bit, but uh, hopefully we got there. Uh, and uh, if you like what you see here, please let me know. Like I said, I work for tips. I, I work for, I, I'm motivated by, by praise and feedback. So the more feedback I get, the more likely I am to post, post new content sooner and uh, hopefully better content because I, I have a better shape of it of what is needed or wanted from the community. And I will catch you later. Peace.